Okay. <clears throat> Good morning, everybody. Okay, after this talk about uh, the evolution of the hip and how dysplastic hip uh, happens and the conservative treatment, uh, they asked me to speak about the uh, surgical treatment of such hips. And uh, the, for me, this is the main question. Why and when we have to operate the dysplastic hip? This is always the question. And uh, the most, most important point is if the diagnosis is missed, of course. Then it's a neglect hip, but then we have to operate it. And uh, you are on the way here in the Chile to more and more not to miss uh, such hips by ultrasound screening and so on. In Switzerland, we have nearly 99% of all the babies have screening, so we treat it all in the first three, four weeks, and therefore we have not many to operate. And the second point is if the initial treatment was not adequate, not the correct treatment initially, uh, if there is a complication as AVN or redislocation, of course, if for a secondary treatment, an insufficient surgical treatment was used. So, I start with the point one. If the diagnosis is missed, of course, here you see such a, a situation. Why it's missed? Doctor does not see the baby sometimes, of course. Uh, it's in your uh, region of South America more frequent than in, in Europe. No screening is implemented. Sometimes parents refuse treatment. We see this also more and more in, in Europe. And X-ray in all the babies are mis uh, misinterpreted. So the diagnosis is the crucial, it's clear we have seen this, and I would, most of the neglect cases are type three and type four, of course, and this is a big problem. That means that the subluxated and dislocated, uh, dislocated hip. So this is our scheme, it is, it came in Switzerland for the therapy, and you see only in the type, th the red type here, type three and four, we go for reduction, overhead traction, hip spiker, and eventually arthrography and eventually operation. But all other, as we can early treat these children, we do not go for an operation. So here is such an example. As you see, uh, this was a dislocated hip. You see it's not centered when we did this, but when we make it in an overhead traction, gentle reduction, and then you get in a good result without open reduction, without surgery. But it needs an early treatment, of course, and the correct treatment. So. Second point, if the initial treatment was not adequate, situation after open reduction. You see, this is exactly this child had an open reduction and ended up in this. So the open reduction we can discuss was, uh, in my uh, opinion, not correct or adequate. And therefore, it was a real dislocation, of course, and AVN as well. So in this situation, of course, this, baby, uh, this child needs uh, later on an operation, and the correct operation is not on the femur side, then it's on the acetabular side because it's the acetabular problem. Here, another example, Look, as you see, this situation was treated in an open way, uh, created a, a necrosis, as you can see here, and end up in this disaster. Of course, we have to avoid this, and then uh, very often, Especially for in my situation, they ask me, Dr. Slongo, can you help us to solve this hip? But you know, uh, this is not so easy to solve this hip. Or if there is a complication as AVN or redislocation. Okay, you see it here on this side. Here it was a combination of, you see, intertrochant virus osteotomy, some kind of osteotomy, nobody knows exactly what happens here. And here, open reduction and the redislocation or a subluxation and AVN, or as you have seen in other cases, I have hundreds and hundreds of such cases A to C, or then end up in this. So what you can do, okay. So the fourth a problem is if for a secondary treatment an insufficient surgical treatment was used. This was also a previously a reduced hip, but then reduced location, and then they made a second operation. But again, the second operation was only a kind of a DECA or a PEMBER that nobody knows exactly, and end up in this result. That if you have an insufficient situation, then you have to go for a correct uh, a treatment. Here you see another example. You see this is the situation before and after operation. You, uh, what was done? This is a kind of child abuse. I have to say this exactly. This is child abuse, 
of cause and not treatment. Here, it's a good case, exactly what I said, what to do. This was a question from a country here in South America in a seven-year-old child with this situation after two or three operations before, you know, what you can do. So what to do, the consideration in this situation, what can we do, really, this is a big question. Would it make sense to make now an operation? What is the profit and what kind of complication we can expect? And what is the future of such a child, you know? Nowadays, we have options to operate these ch uh, children. In your program, you see such a picture after a colonoplasty. What to do? Depends on the experience skills of the surgeon, of course. For th such a hip, you need a high skill. This is high-end uh, surgery for hip, and it's not everybody's uh, work. I guess such a child needs a center for hip surgery. Depends on the technical possibility you have. I see very often in a hospital that you, they operate such children with insufficient and inadequate instruments, need a good team and good optimal operation technique and uh, automatic approach again, and you should not make more uh, disaster and avoid AVN, even you have an AVN, but an additional AVN, and avoid redislocation. That means at the end of such an operation, you should have at least a quite good of it. That means the goal is, only one sufficient treatment which guarantees perfect result and not some test. Now we have very often colleagues tell me, yeah, we have to try to do this or we have to try to do this. No, this is not, con this is not a concept. This is no surgical concept. The, the, the patient is not a field of experiments, okay? You can make experiments at home, but not as a patient. So what is the problem and how to assess? First of all, uh, one of the big questions is how old is the child uh, when he came for an operation? And the assessment of this hip. And I go in three steps. And this is education. First of all, you have to evaluate the situation of the acetabulum. Is the acetabulum the problem? Or second, uh, neglect the acetabulum. Is this a problem, the femur? Or the third, the relation, femur and acetabulum. That means, if Estefania makes a traumatic hip dislocation, point one and point two are normal, but the relation between head and, and uh, acetabulum is wrong because it's dislocated, okay? And so you can play with the situation. So therefore, we developed such optical integral, four types. You see, this is type one, is a normal hip. Type B, you see, is not a completely normal hip. The acetabulum is too short. No values, no measurement, only visual. And then you see the type three and the type four. So we are going along this. What is the problem in the age? In my hand, I have, over my long career, uh, uh, divided in three groups. Children up to three years with neglected hip, three to 10 years, and over 10 years. So. Situation of that acetabulum, I will go shortly to this, what I said before. You see here, spheric or not spheric situation of the cartilage. So here you see, of course, the acetabulum here is different from this. This acetabulum looks quite good, but the hip is dislocated. This is more dysplastic. There is not really not existing. Situation of the femoral head, in the same situation, look, this femoral head here looks quite normal at this seems to be not normal, but we know what is the problem in the meantime in this hip. In principle, this is the head, and this is missing because the pressure is here. So this is the situation. And the next situation is then the relation between acetabulum and femoral head. Of course, we see there is a wrong relation because the hip is out as well as here, okay? So when I came to the treatment algorithm for surgery, I have the group one up to three to four years. Depends a little bit of the size of the child. Okay, we go for a gentle overhead traction and close reduction. I have no compromise. If the parents do not accept this, we can go to another clinic. So very gentle. So we have nearly zero AVN over the last 30 years. So this is our information then for the parents, how we do this in all these kinds. So if close reduction it failed in our hand less than five to eight percent, and these are mostly teratogenic, gentle open reduction by a Smith-Patterson approach. Here's such an example. This hip could not be reduced, 
Then you go for arthrography. You see, even in the arthrography, you have all the scar inside. We press it, not inside. Then we go for an open uh, reduction. At the beginning, we uh, made the anterior uh, medial lateral approach with, uh, according to tennis, but then we have changed to the Smith-Peterson approach. In this way, as you can see here, is the femur, the pelvis, so as tendon, and then we go by Smith-Peterson approach to make a gentle uh, reduction and uh, release the capsule, as you can see here. In short pictures, we disattached the muscle from the pelvis, never split the iliac crest, this is wrong, and then you go down and you have a fantastic view uh, to the capsule and you can release all the adhesion lateral what are redislocation forces and then you can uh, here you see the cutting of the pars reflecta and then you can uh, reduce the head in a good way okay you see here all these steps and then you make the capsule release a uh, and the suture of the capsule and then the hip is adequately in and the child has a hip spiker for some days but what's happened with the group, I say group 1B, from 8 to 10 months or up to 3 years? In this age group, it makes no sense, in my uh, uh, opinion, to make a surgery. The child has no disadvantage. Wait and see. There is no disadvantage for the later therapy. Goal of safe and definitive treatment then later on, together with pelvic osteotomy. Again, remember, one therapy safe therapy, uh, definitive therapy. Here is such an example. You see 24 uh, months, nearly two years. We did nothing. And then later on, six months later, with two and a half years, then or three years, we went for open reduction and a triple, and then with a good result. Then we go to the group two. These are children between three, four years, up to nine years. If dislocated, we have to go for open reduction and a triple immediately. No other osteotomy. And without femur osteotomy, this is absolutely not necessary. If only residual dysplastic, okay, we have not to open the hip, it's only the triple osteotomy. So this is uh, the tip, uh, the triple osteotomy. We, you know, f first we made the open reduction. The, the approach is absolutely the same. We have not a second approach. And then we make the triple osteotomy step by step and uh, we reorientate the acetabulum around the head. Here's such an example. You see this is high dislocated hip, nose recentered. Then we made a triple osteotomy and you see the result. And please recognize no shortening or something of the head, a, a, a femur, and it looks good and it's similar and it is the situation. Only in severe C cerebral palsy patient, we need shortening, as you can see. And even in this situation with a triple, you can make a safe treatment. So then we came to the last group, group three, over eight, nine years, high dislocation. It's a new way of colonoplastic. If we have only residual dysplasia, you see there are two different ways. Uh, then we go for a triple or PIO. Here we see the colonoplastic, uh, in this situation, we end up in a quite good hip, but it's a high-end surgery as well. Or you go for a triple osteotomy in these plastic hips, as you know. So what's about other osteotomies like Deca, Pembert, and Salter, Chiari? In my hand, today, in the 21st century, these are not adequate operation, especially not for dislocated hips. Thank you very much.